Are you ready though, bro? Do you want to have a seat? You no, I don't. I, there's no way I can sit down right now. All right, bro. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, bro. Are you ready? Yeah, let's go. What up, guys? As you can see, we are in downtown Dallas today, doing things a little bit different. Today, I'm gonna go visit my boy Brandon. Brandon is a good friend of mine. I've known him since 2017. Found out about him at an art show. Fast forward five years later, I reached out to him, trying to get something done. He gave me the call the other day, said, Scotty, your piece is done. I need you to come pick it up and check it out. So we're gonna go ahead and go upstairs to his loft to check out his artwork along with kind of, you know, behind the frames on how things are done with my boy Brandon. Show you guys some of his pieces, explain to you guys how how he makes these certain pieces. Also, just check out his studio and just kind of see how things are in the day of life of an artist. So, come on, let's check it out. What's up, dog? And you got the shirt on. Dog. Had to, had to represent. And you got the shirt on. You know. This is my boy right here, What's going Brandon. On, guys? He's the homie. He's been building my piece for, how long, has it, how long have you been working on this? Dude, I started working on it. I'm working about six months. We've been talking about it for Ever, because I was telling him about how we met in 2017 yeah, at the art show. Yeah. Or actually, it was probably, what building was it? Was right, it right over there, there Irving Street. Yeah, down the street. But uh, saw his art piece, fast forward, I was telling him that we finally were talking about trying to figure something out. Finally they, did. You finally had stuff going, I was going on, but then we finally coalesced it into yes, something. Yes, sir. So this will be my first time seeing it. Of course, I've seen it in pictures, but as far as in person, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm really excited. But first, I was wondering if there's any way that we can kind of show off some of your art upstairs and maybe just kind of do like a walkthrough of yeah. like how you do things, how you got started, and just kind of some of the behind, we call it behind the frame, oh. and kind of get an idea of just like how you do your art. Is oh, that most cool? definitely, for yeah, sure. So let's go check out upstairs yeah, first. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is very exclusive. Typically, I do not allow photographs in my apartment, yeah, but it is it's a special occasion. Special. So one thing I love about your pieces is that they're all very big. Yeah, bro, like the scale is crucial to like the impact of the painting. Cause you know, like on the phone screen, it's not the same. You scroll sure. through Instagram or Facebook or whatever, when you like experience a painting in person, it just overpowers you. It's not, it's yeah, not this like is that. life size. So it's yeah, just right. like right it's here bigger in my than life. And then it's like the, the perspective is so close that you can't even back away from it. Like you're just, you're stuck like battling with this monster thing. Now, these pieces in your house, these are not commissioned pieces or some of them are and going to a home later or are these things that are on your mind and you paint? Well, like most of these that I keep, if I keep them for a long time, it's because like I love them and I don't really want to sell them and I'm in a position where I can hang on to the ones I love. I do a lot of commissions and those are usually out the door pretty quick. My abstracts are some that I like to do, but sell pretty quick to like these pieces that look like me you know you okay. can tell like you can tell which ones are like the ones that I so this wasn't taken to. from a picture this was actually up here no, that was all in my head like okay. everything that I you see I conceived of like okay mentally first now is there a story behind this one well this one's just like the war horse so it's just everything it's like an amalgamation of everything a horse is it's a unicorn it's a pegasus it's like a beast of burden and it's impactful and powerful and meant to just inspire awe in the viewer. Okay, and yeah. then these are actual, is this painted or just like it? It's gold leaf, baby. Gold leaf, baby. Gold leaf, baby. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. Y'all see the, y'all see the grill in the yeah. mouth, Y'all see the grill. Johnny Dang exclusive. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get my chains <laughs> up. Yeah, so I go to Houston in two weeks. I got, oh, I'm definitely going to try to get some more shit. Don't gonna, shit. Gonna, gonna go to. Uh, I'm going to go to Dallas back to Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah
so many albums about Kansas City, and that's like the Kansas City skyline. Okay. Also, the Western Auto building. Like, as you leave Kansas City, right. you see the Western Auto sign. A lot of his songs are like, when he's on the road, it's stormy. So, this side is a storm, and whenever he's home, it's like beautiful. <laughs> I so, love it. You know, and then he's got like a little nine in the eye of the snake. Oh, yeah. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, bro, it's all type of little stuff there. A little baby details. He said he's scared of lightning, so I had to put a lightning bolt, and a lightning bolt actually. It glows in the dark, you can't tell right oh, now. Oh no, you can tell. You for sure can tell. Yeah, bro, there's details on top of the details on top of the details on all the Speaking stuff, of that, like this one right here, it's, yeah. you would think it's very simple yeah. with just the colors, but if you really look into it, you'll see that there's a lot, each, almost looks like each ray has yeah. some sort of different detail or pattern they to They are, it. exactly. Yeah. Like, how do you even do this right so here? So there's different like techniques of spray paint and different caps and different colors and different layering elements you can apply to spray paint or aerosols or acrylics to create different outcomes. Like my singularities, which is what I call it, these pieces are like a single point of constant expression and expansion. So from this point that you cannot conceive or perceive this infinite void, everything that you know is created. And when you view this entire image as a whole and step back, you can see a cohesive image as opposed to trying to dissect each individual aspect. You can't gain the image, but that's like the limitation of the human mind. You can never really see the image until you experience it as a whole. Right, and then, conceptually. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, it's dope. Now, is there any meaning between each thing, or is this just... It's, it's more like color theory, you know, I like to do rainbows and glitter, and there's Swarovski crystal, of course. Because uh, it's, ha it's hard to... There's one person I've spoke about on the channel before, and it's Cos. Yeah. And people know Cos of his figures. Yeah. I learned about Cos first from his art. And one of the things that I always talk about Cos is how he takes two spectrums of colors merges them together, but then they mesh at the same time. Yeah. So it'll have like tonals and neons coming together, sure. but it looks good. It's paradoxical. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's like paradoxical. these two ends of the spectrum, you right. bring them together. And that's what I'm looking at when I'm looking at this right here, because you'll see flat colors, you'll see neons, you'll see gloss, you'll, you'll see, see gloss, you'll yeah. see different patterns from like marble to splatter, and then just different things, like little silver lining right here. Yeah, all that stuff. But it looks good as it, when it all comes together. Yeah, I mean, you can step back into the into this room if you want to see like, kind of a like better a, perspective of it. Get like a full view. Yeah. And then I see yellow was the base color. Is there yeah. a reason behind that? Or is that just as far as a standout focal yellow, color? Yellow is one of the first colors your eye registers. So first color your eye yeah, registers. You, and that's, you know the yellow hat's always super bright. That's, that's why I say like fast, the red cars always look fast yeah. on the highway yellow or whatever. Yellow school buses, like you're always gonna see that yellow school bus. Okay. You're always gonna see those yellow caution okay. signs. Those are, you always see a bumblebee. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah. Even, for even though how small and fast yeah, it's bro, you're gonna see that yellow first. Yeah, that's bro. why McDonald's is yellow and red. Yeah, bro. Really? Yeah. In China, that's So actually. when you're driving, it's just like, where, where can we eat? And it's just boom, yeah. McDonald's, make it easy, you're smart. Yeah, red is a powerful color. That's why everything in this room is red. All right, well, let's red, make our way into this Reds room real quick. This is how I first found out. First, it was really that one over there. Yeah, but we'll get to that one. As far as this style of yeah. the immersive fur yeah. into the arting is how I found out about you and was what drew me to him. I like wanted, I like, I'm afraid to touch it. Everybody but. wants to touch him, but like. Only Scotty can do this. Only Scotty. So why him? It's well, Denzel, correct? It's Denzel playing Frank Lucas. So okay. like, I'm all about hustling and I don't want to say drug dealing. I'm all about like people getting it, especially people that look like me that are going through any means and like dedicating themselves to their task or their goal. Right. So like Denzel as an actor, like immerses me in every role that I see him in. Like every time I see him in a movie, I'm like, yeah, I believe it. Training day, <laughs> like yeah, he's, that's him. And then he's playing Frank Lucas in this film, American Gangster, where he's like yeah. an amalgamation of all the different like 70s era or 60s era, like, dope dealers and mobsters and thugs so it's like those two icons together in one like image which fits you in a sense you see yourself through that in, I wanna, I, in, in little areas of yeah course, like not the actual nah, figure but, but like the, the ability to grind and get up and right, buy any sure. means bro I, I, I gotta respect so then that. you're not getting rid of this piece that's probably why it's in your room i mean i'd imagine if it, the price is right i guess people, people give me offers i mean i'm, I'm gonna need like 
at least six thousand for that one just because i love it for everyone that's watching know that these pieces in this house technically are for key but everything's got a price everything's got a price everything's got a price the number's got to be right Wait, first of all, let me touch this before I say anything. You gotta touch everything. That's the best part of like everything in here. Like you just want to touch all this. Question stuff. is, is how many layers is this, bro? I mean, at least it's at least twenty, if I remember correctly. Twenty-three. But there's layers underneath that too, so it's like I had to prime it and like do a lot before. Do you I, have names for everything? Like, what was, do you have a name for this one? Do that you, one's seduction. Seduction. Yeah. Because uh, this reminds me of lipstick. Yeah, women love this painting. This reminds me of lipstick, yeah. like like uh, uh, Kylie Jenner's line or something yeah, like right, that. Yeah, that's why it's right next hey, to the Hey, Kylie. Holla at me, cause you fire. <laughs> <laughs> Kylie <Honestly>. Jenner. <laughs> Funny, that's crazy. We'll talk. I will talk more on how this process goes. Yeah, for sure. On the one that you yeah. you did that I love. Yeah, I got a in, lot of different styles. Which is like in the other you'll, room. you'll see fur from the rappers. You'll see like yeah. still lifes in here. You'll see abstracts. You'll see all types of different like elements of my mind at play, and it all comes together. It it doesn't. It works well individually, but right. when you see it as a unit, yeah, it's like this is powerful. And speaking yeah. of rappers, if you make your way this way, you see you got the Migos. I feel like they're the perfect people that fit the description oh. for for this because of yeah. just their style and how they dress. Just luxury, and how just they were optimist. just they were yeah. always just kind of out there with their jewelry and the way that they dress. For sure, this one's probably going to be my favorite though out of the three. Yeah, that's, you got to buy the set though, you know. And these are yeah, for sure. These are real uh, Swarovski yeah. crystals. Oh, nothing but the best. Nothing but the best. You know, you gotta have Mama. Yeah. Mama. <laughs> and then chicken wings real cool. You gotta have chicken wings. Any concept behind that or no? Well, my grandma used to always make chicken wings. Like, that was the one thing, like, I yeah. remember her cooking, and she couldn't cook anything else that I recall very good. But the chicken wings, <laughs> but the chicken wings are slapping? And, you know, every hood spot, like, you know, has that chicken wing yeah, that for you sure. get three piece, you know, and it kind of looks like a lightning bolt. So it's like, there's some power in food that we all can associate. Some with. power in food you because know? it looks like a lightning bolt. You know, you get um, hungry sometimes too, on <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> This is the one I wanted to speak on first because I remember when you were first making this, it looked like a crazy process. It definitely and I remember was. I'd seen like the little like papers that you were putting on there and yeah. like melting on there or whatever. And you had told me this is was it, it was real gold, it's right? A 24 karat gold leaf. Okay. Applied. Explain the process behind this right so here. So this this piece is actually on a 14 gauge aluminum substrate, which is why it does. Makes do, you, do you make these yourself? I have a, a fabricator that makes them for me, up okay. to my specification. Okay. So it's the 14 gauge aluminum with a curly maple frame because the maple has the same tensile strength as the aluminum. So if this piece ever were to flex, it's still stable. I hate it because I have some pieces at my house that are like at war. Bro, yeah. and so I had to get the, uh, the cleat uh, frames yeah. where you slide it on from the top and bottom so that it's just up there and not giving it a chance to like with the air and oxygen and that wall to, to turn and warp and whatnot. And that's why this one's cool because it's all archival material. So like after I make the frame or have the frame made, there are, there's almost a hundred layers of paint on this thing because it's triple prime. It's each layer is dripped and then dripped again. And then it's resin. And then there's two layers of 24 karat gold leaf. There's like almost two thousand, no, over two thousand dollars in supplies. That was my next question. Yeah. It's like how much? Like how do you buy these pieces? You have to buy a booklet of gold leaf, and like each like sleeve of leaf will have like twenty five sheets in it, and it's like thirty dollars or something. And you melt with a torch. So it's supplied with what's called size. So it's a glue okay. that you have to apply to the surface, allow it to get to a certain level of like tackiness. So you have to time over a span of four hours when you're gonna apply the glue and you have a certain time limit to work in while you're applying that. So you can't just put the glue in and put it. You have to put it on, let it set, test it, and then apply as much as you can, as fast as you can. So then how long did it take to make this? This is a process, I feel it's like. like three months. This was literally the, how long the process would take if yeah, you were to work on it every day. I mean, I did work on it every day and it takes that long because it takes, there's so many layers. I that feel like the bottom would be thicker in the top because everything melts down but it looks like it's evenly proportioned that's the art 
<laughs> how much does something like how much does something like this cost? I'm gonna need like 15k for this, bro. I, I just love it. I just love it so much that it's. I mean, with be. two thousand plus in supplies of gold, and then three months of however many hours every single day. Yeah, I mean, bro. you have to understand that this isn't something that, that you can just build overnight. Yeah, I can't just throw this on anything and make it happen. You have to plan it. Like I just wanted to make a giant melting block of gold on my wall, and I think I succeeded. I feel like this is this is honestly something that you would see opening up into somebody's oh, yeah. house it's, and it just being one of the first bro, it's pieces it. inside of you know whatever wrap staircase or however. You gotta have you gotta have a space. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta have a space. Like you have to have a crib, a crazy crib for a piece like this, bro. You can't just This is beautiful. And the name of this one? This one's luxury. Luxury, of yeah. course. Of luxury. Course. I could have guessed that one. <laughs> luxury. This one's my favorite. And also keep in mind, we're on the works right now of trying to figure out some sort of deal because I need this in my crib. And honestly, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, bro, I've had offers on this painting and like people, they want it, but I think if anyone needs it, it's gotta be you. It might, it might have to go in the store. Ooh, that'd be we might, nice. We might have to talk about how we need that too. Because that would be, <clears throat> Now, I, I missed out because before the Cameron, he had a Pimp C. Ooh. And y'all know him, I'm a Texas boy, yes. and Pimp C is one of my favorite. Yes. But at the same time, Cameron plays an impactful role in my life growing up as well. The whole dip set, Cameron especially though. So I missed out on the Pimp C, but the Cameron is still here. The Cameron is technically off limits right now for any of these viewers watching until I negotiate or decide that I don't want it. Because I guarantee you once this drops, a lot of our followers and subscribers and people like that will be drawn towards yeah, this one. It's, it's a, like, that's why I can't let it go. Not only is he legendary in my eyes, but this picture is an iconic picture around the world. Okay. Everyone knows this picture. If you guys don't know it, it's a meme. You're under a rock. It's a meme. Right. It's, it's everything. He's got the old pink flip phone. <laughs> he was wearing a full pink mink uh, top to bottom hat and suit. And again, yeah. this is the whole immersive feel to it. But the thing is, is this is a, was it five feet? Four, or four foot by five feet. Four foot by five feet immersive. So this one's kind of consumes it, you it when you, yeah, like when you whenever feel, you're in front you of it. feel the thud of it. Like I can feel the vibe coming off of the painting. Now, with the furs, he hand sews all the fur, correct? Yes. You don't glue, apply, no, you it's literally- all, It's all hand sewn, it's attached directly to the canvas. Crazy, wow. and then these are all hand glued. This is over 600 individually glued Swarovski crystals. So, if you go to the nail salon, you know how much those little crystals are yeah. that the girls put on their nail. It's a, it's Imagine a that many. Yeah, bro, so the supplies I use and the quality I try to maintain, it's a, I, I try to get a craftsmanship level. Now, real fur? No, that would be evil. Not evil, but like. I don't so you don't use real fur on anything, correct? I don't think, I don't think it's right. I did use a, with the big, I used real Kuji though. That's different. That's okay. okay. Yeah. So. Speaking of the, the Kuji, we're going to have to actually travel to go visit that piece. So when we're done here and done downstairs, we're going to take you guys somewhere else to show you where the last two pieces of his artwork is actually located. Don't blow your mind. Cameron's seen this one, right? He has. He said it was fire. He said it was fire? All, all, the, all these artists have seen their paintings. They know Are you doing. ever the type to like gift the artist a painting? Is that something that you've done before or you would be willing? It feels like I need that. Certain people need to have certain paintings. Like I kind of envision where a painting needs to be. Like with yours, you know how much we discussed how yeah, the sizing sure. and everything and everything was little detail. So like if it's in the right place at the right time, then yeah, I want my art to be more importantly where it's supposed to be to build a legacy as opposed to just building my bank account because I need to like be infinite, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm the same way with sneakers, bro. So I just bought the Eminem 2 from the yeah. laboratory. They kind of, you know, from watching the YouTube channel, they knew that I was an Eminem fan. Yeah. And it just turned out that the, even the guy who sold it to them found out that I had bought it and he knew I was an Eminem fan. Mm. And so those people reached out to me and they're like, I'm really glad that you somebody yeah. I know that one is into sneakers, two into the artist of the sneaker is getting that shoe. That makes all the difference. And it, and it makes all the difference. Exactly. So something like this plays a big factor of where it goes next. Yeah. So that not only will that person represent the right way, but it also will have a longevity of forever being an iconic piece through you, the person, and the, then subject. the subject of the art. You so. understand. 
tight. This thing is awesome. Yeah, bro. Glad you dig it, bro. Hopefully we can figure something out with that. Yeah. All right, explain this one. This so, one looks like it's got a story behind it. This one actually is just something that I've been was needing to do. It's kind of as I'm transitioning away from certain styles, I'm focusing on my singularities, which is that singular point of light in which everything comes from. This one is just like the woman has an idea of okay. like womanhood, but also like the sauce that black women are gonna bring to you, especially when she's standing in front and of you. And so like each that. one of these colors and rays coming from behind her yeah, signifies like, something in that. Yeah, her. her her power, her okay, her softness, her whatever you want, but it's all coming from So like you spoke about point. earlier, you have the focal point that you don't know is, like you said over there. Straight up. And then as everything comes out from the focal point being her, you step back and now you understand like, okay, this is everything that entails inside of a strong, independent woman. You got it. I like so that. So you know what's up, bro. You know what's I like up. that. And then of course, you know, you gotta add the, you gotta add the, the, the hoops on there, the, the diamonds. Every girl loves diamonds. You know? So you know you gotta have the diamonds. And I'm surprised you didn't even do the nails either. Yeah, now I was, I was thinking about it, but I have I have somebody who's really interested in this painting. So And they like it as it is? Yeah, so okay, cool. she'll, she'll probably be getting it very soon because she's been on me about it since I started. <laughs> very adamant. We're all like excited about it. Cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so this is the Liger. This is the Galactic Gilded Fire Breathing Rainbow Liger Coin. <laughs> it has to have a ridiculous name because it's a ridiculous painting. And I remember I asked you, this isn't a, this wasn't a painting for anyone. This was just, no. you did this one just because. I had it in my head, man. I had to, I had to see it in real life. Now with animals, I've seen you have different things with animals. Is it, do you have a passion for animals or? I have a passion for the symbolism of animals and okay. like what they represent. You yeah, know, like so, with the horse over there. Yeah, it's like just that. a powerful animal, you know, that just has a lot to it. Now, I remember when I came over here and I was looking at the pieces a couple months back, I was a little kind of drawn to how you did the light over the picture. So if you look oh, yeah. closely on the detail, you can see the cast of the sun over the actual artwork, but still see the artwork behind it. How did you do that? So like, I still don't even know how you did that. And with the gloss, it kind of like brings it all to life even more. No, it looks like, it looks fake. I want it to look fake. Again, with the spray paints, different transparencies and okay. different techniques you can use if you're taping off and you know what layers you're gonna put and when you're gonna use it, you just have to conceptualize before. Like, right. If you plan out, you know, you plan, bro. You work your plan. All day. It's going to work out. So just knowing what I wanted to do and having the vision and knowing where I wanted my singularity to start from and what I wanted it to show, then you get... The you colors know. are so bright. And I don't know if it's the gloss that you put over it that really just brought it out. Yeah. This thing is like crazy. You know, it's, it's rainbows on rainbow. So like there's a rainbow in the Liger coin, right? The horn is a rainbow. There's rainbows coming out of the singularity that are also rainbows, you know? So it's just, and then there's rainbow glitter inside of there. <laughs> so it's another one of those like paradoxical things where it's like, it's a, it's kind of like Lisa Frank. I don't know if you remember the Lisa Frank folder that girls used to have, but it's like, wow. Hyper masculine, you know what I'm saying? You literally just brought me yeah. all the way back with Lisa <laughs> Frank. Like, the, the lip gloss. All of them. She that's had everything. That's why I liked her, because she would give you a folder. She'd give you a lip gloss. She'd give you a bunch. Yeah. She'd give you and it had all the crazy the shit inside style. of it. But you like, dang, this is dope. Yeah, shout out Lisa Frank. Yeah. That's crazy. I wonder if they still even, do they still? Oh, yeah. She got the Instagram page. Check her out. Yeah. Damn. Legendary. I wonder if she's seen this. I hope so. I mean, she inspired me a lot with her. I don't want to say like, money making but like her capitalistic approach to mm -hmm. the art like this is her style and she's going to give it to you all the different ways that's what i'm trying to do just give you all the different ways of the same thing and y'all gotta love it well speaking of different ways we're about to go downstairs and he's going to give me my piece in a different way and so i'm really excited about that so it's right downstairs right we just yeah. gotta take the elevator all right cool sure. let's take the elevator this is a studio correct that we're going to yeah okay so underground studio where we're gonna go check out the piece that i got commissioned by him bro he has my Uncle, he has my uncle on his wall. Is your uncle? No, it's not my uncle, oh. but I mean, we got to be related in some sort, right? Wow. OG Chuck Norris? Yeah, I'm in a movie with Chuck Norris. Oh my God. No, Swear to God. 
So like we just were like playing with like sticks in like some western village. But yeah. That's tight. I need to see this movie. Do you have it? It's called Bells of the Innocents. All right, y'all. So we're about to go to the studio. So this building is cool because it's like a creative focus building. So there's like a music studio here and there's an art studio for any of the residents. Right. So this is where I do most of my work, spend most of my time. Art room. And you know who painted that. It's about to go down, bro. Yeah. It's about to be my first time to see it. Yes, sir. I had to cover it up. I ain't gonna let you just get the first view. Oh, I forgot you're working on the uh, oh, the rose one. Rose, rose. Look at this. Oh, this is big, bro. You ain't even. Close. This is big. We're about to do fur all the way around it, like yeah. Cameron. This is a sneak peek. O M M G. I'm gonna do the yellow fur, and I'm gonna do green velvet oh, on the top hat. Wow. Who's this for? For me, bro. Okay, I was about to say it would be so cool if Ross. Was I mean, he. You know he's. His estate, there's yeah. somewhere room. That's what Ross has room for this. He needs to have it. Rose, if yeah. you watch my YouTube channel, this. no, this is going down. And the biggie. Uh -huh. That's why you're here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I want you to hear that sound. Like, I want you to see this painting and then automatically just oh. in your head. <laughs> Are you ready though, bro? Do you want to have a seat? You no, I don't. I, there's no way I can sit down right now. All right, bro. I can't. Oh, oh is it right here? It's right here. Oh, wow. I didn't even know it was on the easel like that. Yeah, bro. You ready? Yeah, let's go. Oh, the board is fire. Oh my gosh. This is so badass. I remember when you were looking at the pictures, you were. Now yes. you can touch this one as much as you want. And this is, now I uh, haven't seen the do rag yeah, on there. See how I had to like finesse it to make it do that, bro. It's wild. And how his hat looks like he's kind of putting it on like he's. Like yeah, 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 for sure. For anyone that doesn't know, Kangle was huge and a big part of Eminem's career. He wore Kangle in a lot of different videos, along with the do-rag. As to why he wore the do-rag, <laughs> I don't know, because his hair was never wavy no, for no, some he, reason. He's Eminem, bro. He but he was that. Eminem, and he can do that. Straight and up. no one ever said anything about it, and that was just part of his style. And so I made it a point for him to make sure that we added the do-rag material underneath the Kangle. And of course, you know, we did the Swarovski's crystals on the ring as well. But one of the things that just stands out to me, of course you're gonna have the fur, the fur is gonna stand out. But the one thing that stands out to me is the eyes. Always, bro. So you have these this palette of colors of grays and neutrals, and then you have just one pop color, and that's the blue, and I feel like that helps tie everything together. I do like the border. The border wasn't original. We weren't supposed to go with the border, but when we made the sudden changes, adding the border to me makes it better than having it just be the canvas on the wall. For y'all that don't know, like an artist, I needed to be, I had my vision, but like I appreciate that Scotty, you know, work with me to challenge me. It's your vision too, like right. it's my painting, but also it's your painting. So I do, I do need to tell you I appreciate you making yeah. me go in that direction. And, Forcing yeah. me as an artist to evolve. For sure. So. And, and the cool part is, is he's an Eminem fan already. Yes. And he told me that when he painted it, all he did was listen to Eminem the whole time. His entire discography at least <laughs> four times. And he, Eminem makes so many chainsaw references, bro. For sure. Like, it's just, it's, it's interesting to see his whole, like, mind when you just playing them back. Well, the back. one thing about M, if you listen, a lot of people think it's just syllable rhyme after syllable, but he'll drop rhymes yeah and then switch it up oh. to something else and then come back and no. connect the first one and then go and connect the second rhymes to the fourth great. one and then it's two different rhymes going at the same time yes. and storytelling yes i've heard him have three rhyme schemes in a single verse and tell a story so it's like and then the narratives he was coming up with the i mean bro you came out with stan you came out with iconic groundbreaking sure. like genre shifting songs d12 there's only six members but D12 meant Dirty Dozen, meaning that everyone had a second personality. Mm -hmm. Eminem had three personalities. You mm -hmm. had Slim Shady, which was a crazy version of himself. You had Eminem, which was the actual rapper he was. And you have Marshall Mathers, which was him as a human being. And each individual album that he ever dropped, Slim Shady, Marshall Mathers, and Eminem Show, mm -hmm. all those were different styles of rap based on that character. Yeah. And so to be able to do something like that consecutively over and over and over again yes. and sell out, yes. basically sell he's out. three different people yes. as one. And so I don't know, things like that, it's just no, mind blown. I agree. Nobody does that. His level of discography, his level of production, his articulation, his 
undeniable skill. And he's, in my opinion, like what makes a rapper a rapper. And I'm a fan of hip hop, but like Eminem and Biggie and certain people are MCs. Like they don't need a track. They don't need a microphone. They just need a room and, a, and an audience and they can rock the show. Yeah. And, like, and that's and that goes to show when, in one of his songs, he says there's a real slim shady in all of us. And that's just because there's different things that he brings that correlates almost to any human being. And so you can relate to his, mu anyone can relate to his music yes. some way, form or fashion, whether it just be one song out of his whole discography, yeah. you still relate it to it. And so there's a real slim shady in all of us. Agreed. And so this is amazing. This is the coolest piece. That I that I own currently, um, right, you dig it, and bro, bro, this this came out perfect. I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Hey, what you dig it, I'm sir? so happy that's, that's about the, this. That's the biggest thing, bro. I make it. I want you to just when you see, I, like, I want you to light up. I want you to feel goosebumps. Yeah, like, like I can feel it coming up my legs I want right you to now. Feel, like, I want you to hear it in your ear. Like I can hear your baby all day, first, like, bro. Yeah, all day. Bro. That's what's up, bro. I'm glad you love it. The real question is, is if Eminem will ever see this that's the question i think i think i might have a you had told me you you uh had somebody down the pipeline I that I might have that works with his team i think i might have something. and then of course when i post it on my social media i'm gonna ask everybody to to tag him or tag somebody who knows him of course to get his attention i don't even care if he just likes it in comments yeah. like my day will be made my life would be made <laughs> like, I would the acknowledgement would be sure. insane so hopefully fingers crossed yeah. everybody on the channel if you happen to know some way form or fashion to connect the dots for me that'd be amazing to let him see this do it of course if you offer to have it i'll tell him no yeah exactly. <laughs> if he, he can sign it though i've made there's space for him to sign bro right here on the side. i'm not gonna lie if i ever did like uh go to a show and i was able to like have that interaction i would literally somehow find a way to carry this big ass motherfucker all the way down to the show just wow. to have him sign it, it is him imagine because yeah, he yeah. does like the big s Shady like, like that, that would that would be it would be priceless in my opinion at that point. Oh yeah, this is the value of this thing would be fucking insane. Yeah, be dumb. This is beautiful. The hardest part now is getting it to the crib. Facts. But we'll figure that part out later. Are you sponsored by any paint companies or anything like that? Mm -mm. Nobody? Nobody. If you could be sponsored by one, who would it be? If I could be sponsored by any paint company, probably golden acrylics. I use golden all the time or Montana, the Spanish Montana. Golden yeah. acrylics. Spanish Montana, somebody, anybody right. that knows these people. Jerry's Autorama in Dallas are opening a store. You okay. know, local stuff. Please holler at my boy. You yeah. see, you look, you know, already. You see the, yeah. you see the vibes. You see what's invested. You see what's happening. You see what's <laughs> going on. I see you got tons of different colors. Do you like to mix colors to make colors, or do you uh, prefer finding that actual? I color? always mix colors. So always like, mix colors. I all these colors I have, especially in like a liquid paint. All these get mixed into like. I never even use a color right out of the tube. It doesn't even, it doesn't even work. I mean, rarely, but it never, like this, bro, with this piece, I didn't, there's no color, there's no single color. I didn't even want to make a color that could, that could be perceived. Like, I don't want you to be able to say that's orange or that's, I want you to see the red blending with the white blending with the gray blending with the, you know, have you ever mixed colors and they just don't match up how you've already put it on the painting though? To be honest, bro, at this point in like my creative process, I've become so good at like creating my vision on a canvas that I don't have a problem mixing colors. So in other words, uh, you can eyeball work? Yeah. Sure. You don't need no scale? You need a scale. <laughs> you already know. You already know what it is. And is there a name for this besides the art room? Do you call it something? Maker space. This is our Maker space? Maker space. Okay. I like that. Yeah, Maker cool. space. So that concludes the maker space. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the artwork on the easel real quick and we're gonna, for another day, he's gonna pull up to the house and hang it for me and everything. But now it's time to go where? I'm gonna go to the Moody Performance Hall. Okay, what is the Moody Performance Hall for people who don't know? Moody Performance Hall is basically just a space for creatives in Dallas to showcase their work. And it's actually a pretty big deal. So this is art month in Dallas. Every hall in the city is doing something arts related. So I have a piece at the Latino Cultural Center and at the Moody Performance Hall. There's South Dallas that has its own cultural center. Everyone in the city is doing something. Nice. So we're going to go check out the Biggie Small. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Man. The Kool-Aid Man is like, crazy. 
The Kool-Aid Man's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Seen I've only seen it on the wall, but I've never been able to step back really far away and just kind of conceptualize it. the whole thing. So is there a reason why you chose those two pieces? Well, those are the pieces that were accepted into the into the show. Oh, so, so you showcased them? Yeah, so not every, you can submit, a lot of people in the city submitted to these shows and not a lot of people got in. About okay. 200 people got in in these five or six cultural centers throughout the city. So it's, it's kind of a big deal. Nice. Yeah. All right, cool, yeah, let's go check it out. We are at the Moody Performance Hall, and they're closed. <laughs> I hope not, though. Oh, you freaking serious? All right, cool. A young gentleman here let us in, even though they are actually closed today. But he made it happen for us, so we'll be real quick. Do you know anyone else's art in here, first uh, off? Yeah, I know uh, Kiwi Dynamite right here. I like his stuff. So he has this piece called Cubicle, and it's about him in his cubicle while he's gaming and there's cubes of different games and the wow. canvas is a yeah. cube so it's like and the Mario, Sonic yeah bro and wow. then Justin O'Keefe is right here Mario Kart wow like whoa, whoa. Style. this right yeah. here is insane yeah, bro, it's, this is a photograph though right? it is a photograph okay but it's I was gonna say if this was a painting the way that this picture frame comes yeah, so out in the pictures in Super Bowl. helps bring out the yeah, picture definitely no, he knows what he's doing. That's really right intense to look it's at. Very, like the, the gaze, like the yeah, eyes of the for sure. Yeah. The gaze is real. It's now, are all these people local, right? Yeah, everyone here is in Dallas or Fort Worth or... Oh, yeah. this is beautiful. I love this picture. Black Boy Abundance. Daniel's his name. Daniel Gunn. Daniel Gunn. Yeah. Super cool. This is what we came for. This is crazy. This is my baby right here. I'm pretty sure everybody that's part of our subscribers knows this face right here. Oh, but there's some crazy detail <laughs> that goes behind this, and I want you to explain it. Yeah, so this is a notorious B.I.G. for those who you don't know. But a uh, giant painting. This is actually my biggest painting to date. And it has actual Kuji sweaters that Kuji reintroduced for a limited time that are the same pattern that Biggie wore in this photograph that I used as a reference. Now, is this vintage Kuji? No, or is this from the reinvented one? No, it's from the remade. So I had to buy three 5X Kuji sweaters and it cost me like $3,000. Just for the Kuji? Just for the Kuji. You said 5X? Yes. Oh. With Kuji, people don't know, Kuji charges, they don't charge a flat rate. They charge by size. So the bigger the sweater, the more fabric they have to knit, the more they're gonna charge wow. you for the sweater. I didn't know that, and yeah. I honestly don't, didn't, don't think anybody even does no, that. No, but they have to because of the way they fashion. knit this. Right. It, it's like, it's, it's so costly intricate. and it's time consuming. Yeah, they're very high quality. And this has the most Swarovski crystals I've ever put on a painting with over 1,500 crystals individually placed. So it is, it's a tour de force. It's, it's a problem. This was done in 2021, so I finished this last year and I think it's like a crowning achievement on my hip-hop rap artist series and we all know Biggie's one of the greatest if not the greatest rapper to ever flow classic MC classic Americana like I feel like he represents America to the world like I had a guy from Estonia he's like oh I love Biggie Smalls so it's like <laughs> I think it's interesting that he doesn't think of Thomas Jefferson or George Washington like when nah. he thinks of America yeah he one, of one of the people that comes to mind is, yeah, is Biggie Smalls. That's dope to me. I noticed when I was touching it, because I have to, I'm, I have exactly. to touch everything. <laughs> I noticed that it's not on a hard bot. No. Back. So this one, it's actually the, the actual yeah, canvas this material. It's floating. Like, yeah. Kuji is suspending this floating canvas. Oh, it is. Yeah. So you sewed it to that, yeah. and then it's now a part of yeah. it. It's wow. wild. It's wild. I noticed that right when I touched it, I was like, hold like, on, there's yeah, something different going on yeah, right now. It's just like air, so. It, it, and this is the only piece you've had done like this? Yes. Everything else is plastered to, the, the yes. canvas is on the frame. Yes. And exactly. sewn, so and then sewn is, through it as yeah, well. The, the technical aspects of this was only surpassed by your painting. That's the only one I've done more trickery and right, right, magic right, 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 to make, right. but yeah, it's, it's it's wild, man. And last time we spoke, you said a painting of this stature is 30,000? 25. 25,000? I'm gonna need 25 for it. It's, it's, 
It can't go anywhere. It can't just have this in any house. At all. This has to be. I'm not gonna lie. If anybody's connected to P Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sir he Combs, needs he, needs he needs this. It. If anyone needs it. And it's crazy because I'm sure he's offered by through his yeah. whole career, people will probably come to him with millions of Biggie paintings. Yeah. But I don't think any of them is comes to this yeah. Yeah. stature of detail that is put into it than anything else. This one encapsulates the artist. Like I really wanted with this painting, I wanted to make a painting that when people see it, they decide they either can't or don't want to paint Biggie ever again because it's done. Like wow. there, there are artists in throughout history that have made pieces that cannot be replicated and that subject matter is now finished. And I wanted to create a piece for myself and for the culture and for Biggie that really solidified his legacy as someone who deserves to be painted and exalted to this level. Exalted, that's yeah. a great, word, great term for that. I think that's the word. This is beautiful. Thanks man. And I think it's, I mean you look around, there's art all over the place, but I like how you, when you look at this one it differentiates. Really if you look around they're all different, but I love that this one's in its own category. It's, you can go to a lot of different art shows and you see a lot of different people doing the pop art mm -hmm. and the spray art mm -hmm. and the, the out monopolies of mm -hmm. and types of style and then you have people like all these in this room right here Which, that are differentiate differently yes. and different from what you normally see through social media and stuff. You put it perfectly. Well, yeah. I'm gonna put it into the universe, man. Any yeah. of my subscribers that are connected to Mr. Sean Combs himself or Quincy or anybody in the family, man, please, let's try to figure out if we can get this a home over there. That'd be amazing. For sure, it needs to be in New York. Somewhere. You wanna go uh, see the other piece? Yeah, where's that one at? A Latino Cultural Center. Latino Cultural Center, which is in Deep Ellum, and we are on our way right now. Here we are at the Dallas Latino Cultural Center. And we're gonna go check it out. There it is. This thing's crazy. Look at it. Stop listening. Yeah. I can literally hear the oh yeah busting through the fucking wall right now. This shit is hilarious. It's great. Oh yeah. It is it's All right, so let's explain what's going on here and why you chose to do the Kool-Aid Man. So Kool-Aid Man, you know, of course, everyone likes pop art. And this is like, a lot of my work is based around like American culture, Americana, be it subculture, be it hip hop, being, I think what our main culture is capitalism. What I like about the Kool-Aid Man is that he's the ultimate self-referential salesperson. So like he is the product and he sells the product. Like he breaks in your door <laughs> to bring you this juice that is him. And the more he sells it to you, the bigger he gets. And it just feeds his own success. And I think that as an artist or creative or a businessman. That's how it works. Yeah, you have to encapsulate the product in yourself in order to make people believe that it's real. And this is like, not even real juice. Like it's a, a 25 cent bag with sugar in it. And it's like part of our lives. It's part of our- For it's sure. It's like, a, it's like a guide to- Blue raspberry lemonade was my favorite. Bro. That was my favorite. Bro. The blue, the blue, the blue, blue raspberry lemonade one. That was my, my go-to. I used to mix that with different ones, like a blue raspberry lemonade with a regular lemonade yeah. to make it a little bit more lemony. Yeah. Like I learned how to mix colors from Kool-Aid <laughs> because I knew if I put in red and blue, I'd make purple. So like as a kid mixing that, I knew. You know? was, was, I mean, you just chose OG red because I was, yeah. whenever you saw him, it was always red. Yeah. So and again, color theory, like the red, it grabs your attention. Boom. When you see the red, you're like, oh, I know what that is. So the thing that stands out the most, and that's not just right now looking at it, I told him this when we were in his house and I noticed it when you were painting it, yes. is the glare. Yes. You literally took the lights from the ceiling from the picture yes. and implemented it into the glass. I did that because I wanted to like accentuate the fact that as the Kool-Aid man works on himself, on his brand, he becomes more real and the more real I can make him through layers, the more real he appears to yeah. the viewer. So like the ice cubes as well, yeah, bro. which is hard to find to, to draw sometimes because Very you can see like yeah. sometimes the liquid or the color kind of takes over what's inside this, the actual jar, but you can actually see them perfectly. Yeah. This is crazy. The light hitting on all yeah. the right places. People won't even notice all the little details that I'm putting in where his fingers. Well, the thing is, is these are being showcased because they're they're points of the art that are coming forward, which is catching yeah. the light more exactly. than what's behind it. Yeah. And so you can tell how you emphasized on. See how this one's not as crazy because he's, he's backwards, back. yeah. but these are forwards, so you can see it. That's called that's called an art. That's called a contrapasto. So, oh, what? Contrapasto. Okay. So it's a pose that contorts the body to 
demonstrate the skill an artist has in creating form and life and movement. Somebody learned a new word today, say it again. Contrapasto. Contro Contrapasto. Contrapasto. Put a little thing underneath. He's gonna edit it, right? But <laughs> this is beautiful. And this is on wood, this which is not technically how you do most of your art, so it's on canvas, correct? I'm, I do, it depends on what I'm trying to do. So what wood allows me to do is to create the smoothest transitions possible. Plus for a piece like this, it's gonna be a cutout that I want to appear three-dimensional, it needs to be on a panel. But this is actually not just a panel, this is five individual panels that have been merged together seamlessly to create the illusion. But it depends on what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm starting to like the panels a lot more, especially for this So part. we're thinking one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, yeah. five. You got it. The leg was connected to the beauty of the Okay, smart. That's exactly how it went. Beautiful. Is there a name for it or is it just Kool-Aid Man? It's the Kool-Aid Man. Just Kool-Aid Man. So things are already named and they've already, they've already they're done. Like, and it's crazy because when you say Americana and things like that, it reminds me of Cause, so. Yeah. Cause puts his childhood into his art as well. So you'll see like Smurfs, Simpsons, yeah, yeah. you know, things of that matter. And I was reading, which I talked about this in the Cause Museum uh, exhibit that we did. Yeah. But he chose those things because those were nostalgic to his childhood, one. And two, it helped him express art in other countries yeah. who can't understand our language. But if they see a picture of something that they know then it ties that bond yes. to somebody without having to translate anything. Yeah. I think you understand and perfectly. That's cool. Yeah, that's what a great artist always do. They take symbols and symbols of power and things that resonate with a wide range of people and they mold them and contort them into their vision while also staying true to the original source. Material. I mean, we're in the Latino cultural center right yeah, now, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's Latino, which is a different part of the world. Yeah. And here we are with the American Kool-Aid. It represents, I mean, I have people from all age groups, all demographics that can right. always say, oh, I love Kool-Aid. When I was a kid, everyone has a <laughs> yeah. good memory. And it's a smile. Everybody, place, bro. So yeah, man, this is you dig it. I love this thing. Thank you so much. So, cool. so that concludes the art tour with my buddy Brandon, along with the commission piece that I was finally able to be unveiled and look at, which I love by the way, I can't wait for it to go in my home. It was very interesting to see your perspective on how things are made and your perspective and knowledge on art. I learned a lot of different things today. I'm very thankful for that. And I appreciate you taking out the time for us. Yeah, so if you don't mind just kind of letting these people know where to find you if they are interested in some art pieces. Yes, sir. I appreciate you coming to uh, okay. check out the work and having this conversation with me. You can check me out, brandonharris.art. That's my website and my Instagram. Scotty is a great businessman. You should shop with him and he shops with me. So I'll let you do the math on that. But, yeah. <laughs> and, and then of course, if you guys uh, end up wanting to ask him on prices or do something commissioned, just let him know in the DMs, like, hey, I saw you through Private Selection's YouTube channel, or I saw you through Scotty's uh, Instagram, and I promise you Brandon will take care of you on whatever it is moving forward. So. We, got all, we got skills for everybody. If you want to spend money, I can make it happen for you. Yes, sir. All right, man, well, I appreciate it. We're going to get back home, and then later this week, we'll get the painting over yeah, to my house. Cool, definitely.